So the next part of our lab involves titrating the benzoic acid with sodium hydroxide. So we need to look at the balanced equation that goes along with that and talk a little bit about the calculations in order to calculate the amount of benzoic acid that's there. So in our lab, we're going to have sodium hydroxide and we're going to put our sodium hydroxide into our burette. So remember how to read the burette. Remember, you're always going to read from the top down. And so typically, there'll be 0, 0, 0 at the top. And then you'll have uh, 50 will be at the bottom. So remember, you have to um, start off reading, estimate the first decimal place, or uh, read the first decimal place and estimate the second. So you always have to have two decimal places when you're uh, recording the volume that's in your burette. And then our sodium hydroc, or excuse me, our benzoic acid solution is going to go into the Erlenmeyer flask. And then, of course, we have to add a little bit of indicator. So phenolphthalein is our indicator, just a few drops, like one to two drops. And this solution will actually be colorless when we first start, so I won't confuse you by making it blue. Okay, so this is going to be a colorless solution. And so remember, phenolphthalein is an acid base indicator. So when we have just the smallest amount of base left over, it will be this color pink. And you want to make it as pale pink as possible. No dark pink. If it's dark pink, you have to start over. And be patient when you do that. Okay, so let's look at our equation. So we're going to have our benzoic acid that will be in the aqueous layer. And we're going to be titrating it with sodium hydroxide. And so it's going to be a little acid-based titration. So our sodium hydroxide is going to deprotonate our benzoic acid. And so that portion is going to make water. And then what I'll have left over is the salt of benzoic acid. So my deprotonated carboxylic acid is now called the carboxylate ion. So now I have the sodium salt of carboxylic, the carboxylate. So this portion, if it's written like this, will stay colorless until we have an so the equivalence point so remember the equivalence point for this for this balanced equation is going to be a 1 to 1 ratio between the benzoic acid and the sodium hydroxide But once we reach the equivalence point, this still to us looks colorless. So once we add one more drop of sodium hydroxide, I'll upset the balance and go beyond the equivalence point to the end point. So this makes the end point and now that small amount of sodium hydroxide that's left over after the all of the benzoic acid has been absorbed, this is what will be light pink. And that's going to be uh, helping us understand how much benzoic acid was in there. So I need to know what the volume was. So when I started, I can pretend 
that my initial volume maybe was exactly at 0, 0.00, and then maybe my final volume was at 5.62 milliliters. Okay, so I need both of those different pieces of information so I can go back and figure out um, what the concentration was of, or what the number of moles of my benzoic acid and the number of milligrams of benzoic acid. So the other piece of information I need to know is what's the molarity of this sodium hydroxide. So this has to be a standardized solution, which means that Dr. Kulp uh, titrated it with KHP and it will have at least three, sometimes four decimal places. So we're going to pretend that our titration was this. So somewhere around 0.02 molar um, sodium hydroxide. So we're going to need the fact that I've got that volume of sodium hydroxide and I used this volume of sodium hydroxide and I know from those two bits of information I can calculate the number of moles. So my molarity for my NaOH was 0 0.02105. Wait, 2105. And I can calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide from that as long as I know the volume. And so if I want to do this, I can say 5.62 minus 0 will give me 5.62 milliliters, which is 0 0.00562 liters. So I can calculate the number of moles. So let's do that. So 0 0.00. 2105 times point zero zero five six two, and you should get one point one eight three times ten to the negative four. And that's moles. So uh, part of the problem says um, you're going to eventually be converting to, to uh, mil, uh, milligrams. So for now, we can keep this in moles of sodium hydroxide, and then we can do the conversion there in a second. So I've got moles of sodium hydroxide. So this is the number of moles of sodium hydroxide it took me to titrate that number of moles of benzoic acid. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the number of moles of benzoic acid and the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So just to keep everything straight, do that stoichiometry to make sure, because it not always will it be a one-to-one, -one. but for this case it is. So for every one mole of sodium hydroxide, I've got one mole of benzoic acid, and so now I need to convert from moles of benzoic acid to grams of benzoic acid and then grams to milligrams. Okay, so I already know that one's a thousand. And uh, the molar mass for benzoic acid is 122.13. One so let's go ahead and do that calculation. So according to my calculation, that had 14.45 milligrams of benzoic acid in my sample. So you're going to use this information along with, so remember our total sample, we started off with 40 milliliters and we're going to calculate how much was in there. So let's pretend there was 65 milligrams in there, just for example's sake. 
and we did this extraction and so with pretend this is a the single extraction and so for us what was left over in the water layer had 14.45 milligrams in it. So you'll be doing calculations like um, saying what percent of the sample is in the water layer and what percent is in the organic layer. So for this one, there's 14.45 milligrams of benzoic acid in the water layer over the total of 65 milligrams and we can get the, the percent for this that was in the water layer. Okay, so don't forget to multiply times 100 to get your percent. So you should get about, this one said about 22% of the sample was in the water layer. And then theoretically, that would be what 78% would have been in the organic layer. But we're not going to actually calculate that. We're going to measure that. So the amount of benzoic acid in the organic layer will come from the little 10 mil round bottom flasks and you're going to weigh those before and then after drying. Your methylene chloride layer. So with that one, you're going to be able to do the same thing. You'll pretend that we had 65 milligrams to start with. Maybe the difference between the two round bottoms is maybe 29 milligrams. So for the organic layer, you'd say I collected 29 milligrams um, and there was 65 total. So you'll do the percent that way. So these are two different calculations. And there's another calculation that you're going to do that you'll do your actual uh, your uh, partition coefficient calculations as well. But this video is just helpful to get you through doing the, the um, titration and then doing the calculation so you can calculate the number of milligrams of benzoic acid that was present in your aqueous layer that you titrated.